Thanks so much for coming to our first ever breakout session. We're really excited that you're here, especially considering you maybe chose us over lunch. Um, we've created several ways for you to get in touch with us, uh, either during the session or after the session. So first, we have a Dory where you can ask questions, and we'll hopefully save time at the end um, of today's session and answer a few questions. The Dory should be available in the Cloud Next app, um, or you can follow the link on the slides. Uh, if we run out of time, we'll add answers to your Dory questions after the session. <laughs> if you prefer to follow up one-on-one -on -one or after next, uh, there's a few, few options for you. Um, so on the left side of the slide is a link to our site's research form. Um, we're always looking to meet with customers, and participating in research is a way to uh, directly influence the direction of our product. So make sure you sign up if you're interested. And these are our Brian and my email addresses. Please, please don't spam us. But we're happy to follow up with any questions uh, we don't get to you during next. We also plan to hang out outside of the room after the session. Um, I'm not exactly sure how the logistics will work, but you can come find us. So there are a few more sites folks in the room. Um, I'll ask them to stand now so you can meet them after. Um, this is Matt. Matt's a PM on the team. Michael the engineering lead of the team, and Becca, our researcher. Um, please send them all of your really hard questions. So today's agenda looks roughly like this. Um, we'll start by discussing why we're so excited about new sites, and then explain how we plan to help you migrate there. We'll discuss a bit about uh, the, the roadmap for new sites and what you can expect over the next few years. And then we'll actually build a site together. Um, and as I mentioned, we should have some time for Q&A at the end. So let's talk briefly about the history of Google Sites. Um, in 2006, Google acquired a company named Jotspot, which became Classic Sites. In 2016, we launched a full rewrite and redesign of Sites, which we called New Sites. In 2017, we announced that New Sites would eventually replace Classic Sites. And just a few months ago, in late January, we announced a transition plan to move off of classic sites by the end of the year 2021. So to summarize, sites started as one product. Sites is now two products, and it will eventually become one product again. Um, so you may be asking yourself, why did we go through this crazy path? Um, and I think it's worth taking a brief minute to articulate what we saw as the limitations of Sykes back in 2015 or so when we started this transition. So classic sites was an awesome product in its prime. But classic sites can't meet the demands of today. You likely expect great collaboration from G Suite products, and classic sites just doesn't cut it. I'd imagine you expect to be able to collaborate on the same page of a website in real time, just like a Google Doc. But on classic sites, only one person can edit a page at a time, and there's no concept of a draft and a published site. All your changes are either immediately published or discarded. Or I know everyone in this room has a cell phone. In fact, not to call you out, but I see quite a few of you on them now. Um, classic Sites was built in a desktop world. It would require substantial effort to make a classic site look good on a mobile phone or a tablet. Additionally, since classic sites were so heavily based in JavaScript and CSS, if you wanted to make your site look really great, you likely needed to have someone who could help you do that, or otherwise live with the site as it is. Based on these reasons and more, we decided the right course of action was to build a new platform from the ground up. We're really excited by new sites. New sites offers us a healthy, future-proof foundation to innovate on moving forward. New sites was built natively as part of G Suite. It's mobile friendly, and it requires zero code. It's HTML free. So new sites has been created from the ground up as part of G Suite, and this manifests itself in several ways. First, it means your sites are stored directly in Drive, right alongside your doc sheets and slides, with, with similar sharing settings that you're probably familiar with. Second, it means the real-time collaboration you expect from G Suite products is available for you. Your teammates can all work on the same page of the site at the same time, no problem. But third, Sites brings the best of G Suite applications to your fingertips. You can build whatever sites you, you want, bringing in content from across G Suite apps and other Google apps. So embedding a YouTube video or a Google Map or a Google Doc is seamless. And as New Sites is a ground-up rewrite, 
It's built on the best Google and G Suite technology, meaning New Sites is secure, stable, and fast, and getting even faster. So over the next year, you'll likely begin to see substantial speed increases as we roll out our backend improvements we've been working on. New sites are designed to look great on any screen, from desktop to smartphone to anything in between. We handle responsive design without you ever having to think about it. You can have web content that looks good on any form factor. And nowadays, it isn't just tablet, or it isn't just desktop or mobile. It's a tablet on different orientations. This would be really hard for you to handle with code. And in new sites, you'll never even have to think about it. Everything just works. New sites at its core is simple, intuitive, and easy to use. Whereas classic sites as its core is, at its core is HTML, new sites is drag and drop. You can build a beautiful, professional, mobile-friendly website with zero code and just a few clicks. And compared with classic sites, we've heard from so many of you that new sites is easier to get up and running for more people in your organization. We want you to be using new sites. It's where all our innovation in the site space will be moving forward. And we hope you'll like it. Now, let's just pause for one minute. Raise your hand if you've never built a classic site or you have no classic sites in your domain. All right, so everybody raising your hand, you have my permission to stop paying attention for a few minutes. <laughs> Go answer email, and send text, whatever you want. Um, I'll let you know when to pay attention next. Um, but for the rest of you, as excited as we are about new sites, we recognize that you likely have many classic sites in your domain. And to help manage the migration process, we aim to make conversion to new sites as easy as possible. So we offer a few tools today that may be helpful as you think through migration, and I'll talk through them now. So first, we offer a conversion tool. The conversion tool takes the content from your classic site and translates it into a new site with just a few clicks. We released this tool last year for the first time. And candidly, we've heard your feedback about the conversion tool falling short of your expectations. So today, the conversion tool works really well for simple classic sites. But for some of your larger and maybe more important and customized sites, you may run into issues with the conversion we currently offer. We plan to invest in making the conversion experience better by improving the conversion tool incrementally over the next couple of years as we release more functionality in new sites that will help make the migration feasible. There are a few other migration techniques we thought that were worth mentioning. We've heard from some customers that they plan to use this migration as an opportunity to clean up their site's ecosystem. You probably have some sites that haven't been updated or visited in a long time, and it likely doesn't make sense to migrate all of them to new sites. Deleting these sites will cut down on the sites you need to migrate. Or you can use Takeout, and you can export the static HTML of your classic site pages and archive them. We've also seen users starting from scratch in new sites and reimagining and rebuilding an existing site entirely fresh. Users typically like the way that native new sites look, so starting from scratch may make sense in some cases. But we've heard from many of you that we can provide better tooling to make the migration process easier beyond what we offer today. And I can talk about a few new tools coming soon that will hopefully help. So today, it can be challenging for admins to understand their site footprint in their domain. How many sites exist and how many need to be migrated? Who's responsible for those sites and how do I reach out to them? So for admins, we plan to create a dashboard that can become your central resource for managing the transition to new sites. You'll be able to see classic sites that exist in your domain, understand how often they're visited or edited and by whom, and then make an assessment as to next steps. We hope to deliver this dashboard by the end of this year, and we plan to follow that release with bulk action tools that should make it easier for you to migrate or delete many sites at once, or maybe even send emails to site owners and truly manage the migration project. If there's particular information you'd find useful on this dashboard, please do reach out to us. You can leave it on the dory as a question. You can follow up with us after. We're in this together, and we want to give you the information you need to make this migration possible. For site creators, we're working on one place to see all of your sites, a unified site's home screen, also coming hopefully by the end of this year. Your, sites will have a, your users will have a single UI to view all of their sites, both classic sites and new sites. 
will encourage users to create new sites with, well, new sites. Um, but creators will still be able to view, manage, edit, and create classic sites if they so choose. Hopefully, this helps decrease some of the confusion around having two distinct site products with two different starting points. And we recognize these tools are not necessarily enough to ensure a smooth migration. So Classic Sites offers functionality that's not currently available in new sites, and that presents a migration problem. OK, now before I forget, uh, those of you who weren't paying attention up until now, now's the good time to come back. Um, we're going to talk about the exciting stuff. So looking ahead, um, back in January, we released a blog post um, that outlined our high-level plans for Google Sites. And I'll take you through a more detailed version of our plan now. So we spent the past few months deeply understanding how Sites is being used. We met with many customers to better understand how their users are currently using classic sites, currently using new sites, or using other site building tools entirely. And we did our best to identify gaps and opportunities. We identified important gaps between classic sites and new sites functionality, gaps between customer expectations and what new sites could actually deliver. And we identified large opportunities for us to work together and build a better product. So if I were to summarize our takeaways, here's what we've learned. First, Sites offers a really strong foundation for site building today. Sites works for businesses and for schools. I'll talk in a few minutes about some of the awesome sites our customers have created, but we have a strong user base, and it's growing rapidly. Second, users love new sites because it's so simple and it's so easy to use. And as we think about bringing more power and functionality to new sites, we can't, we can't lose its simplicity and the ease with which users can create, edit, and publish sites. Third, sites will benefit from feature enhancements. Whether you're coming from classic sites with particular expectations, or you've never built a site before, and you test out new sites for the first time, it's very likely that you'll have feature requests. So over the past year, we've launched a couple features that really augment this strong foundation we've built in new sites, and they show off just how simple and easy to use sites is. I'll highlight three features that if you or your users aren't using today, I'd highly recommend giving them a try. So first, we launched section layouts. Imagine you're in a rush to create an off-site site. Um, you aren't an expert in design, and you, you don't want to be bothered by how the site's laid out. Uh, you just have event details that you want to share with your attendees. So you can use one of our pre-designed layouts to quickly design pages or sections of pages. You pick a layout you like, you drag or drop it onto your canvas, and you fill the placeholder content with your content. It's one of our heaviest used features, and it helps our users create well-designed sites really quickly. Second, we launched buttons. Buttons are an underappreciated way to call users to action, get your site visitors to actually do something. So you get them to fill out a form or RSVP to an event or anything else you can imagine. And as you should expect from Google Sites, buttons just work. Um, you can link to other content from within the site, or you can link to an external link. And buttons automatically match the colors and look and feel of your site. Give them a try next time you want to create a, a new site. And third, we launched a new way to share sites. We recognize that some sites aren't for everyone to see. So we launched what we call Publish to an Audience where you can specify exactly who can view your published content in new sites. So imagine you have a secret new product your team is working on, um, and you only want your team to have access to the team site where all your resources live. It's very simple. Instead of publishing the site to your whole domain, you publish just to your product team, and they're the only ones who have access to your published site. So through our research, we saw a few really common reasons why users actually build sites. And we thought they're worth highlighting here, as these are the use cases we hope to enhance moving forward in new sites. So we saw a lot of team and project sites. Team and projects build sites to show off their work, consolidate links and artifacts into a central resource, provide contact information, and state a vision, mission, or a goal. Sometimes these sites are aimed internally, uh, for the working group or the project team to help improve productivity and efficiency. And other times, these sites are outward facing to inform the rest of your organization about what's happening in the space and who to reach out to. 
We also saw a lot of event sites, whether it's an upcoming all hands, a leadership talk, an off site. Um, building a site's a great way to tell your attendees about what to expect. We also saw a lot of FAQs or help centers or text heavy documentation. Um, these sites often had the goal of informing or teaching site visitors about something. We saw a few internet landing pages, and this, this in particular is an area we're thinking more deeply about. These are corporate hubs. So when employees need to find information about the company policies or HR documentation, they'd visit this page. But this is only a subset of the great variety of sites you've heard about, we've heard from our customers. Um, the magic of sites is we've built a really flexible site building tool. Um, and you can use sites to build whatever you or your users can imagine. So whether you're a teacher in a classroom building a lesson for students, or a student building a website assignment, or a job seeker building a resume website, uh, Sites is a powerful platform for sharing and learning in the workplace, at school, and beyond. So as we think through these common reasons to build a site, we've developed a plan over the next few years of where we'll focus. So as a first principle, we want to keep sites simple and easy to use. Users should always be able to make good-looking, mobile-friendly sites with just a few clicks. But we want to supercharge sites with new functionality and features. I'll explain some of the features we've committed to over the next few years in the following slides, but know this is a directional subset of what we hope to accomplish. We're focused on four key areas, and I'll talk through each. So first, we believe sites should be visually expressive. We want to give you and your users the ability to customize the look and feel of your site beyond what's possible today. So coming hopefully by the end of this year, you'll no longer need to start with a blank canvas when starting a new site. You'll instead be able to start with a templated site. Templates will come in two different flavors. So Google will seed a template gallery with a few sites that we've built that reflect what we believe best practices are for common site types like teams or projects. But potentially way more powerful and flexible is that your users can create templates for themselves and share these templates with other users. This will save your users huge amounts of time of design and layout when creating new sites. Beyond templates, we aspire to support much more visual expression. So customization will show up in a few ways. For example, soon you'll be able to customize text in text boxes, just like in Docs for a doc. Whether it's sizes, colors, alignments, or spacing, we hope to make as much editable to you in a text box as we can. And you'll also be able to make the site look and feel like your company or your team with new branding capabilities. So imagine being able to create a theme uh, for your company and make it available to all of your users. We also plan to make several new content types available that will help your site viewers interact with, their, with your site content more. So for those really long and complex FAQs or text-heavy sites, we'll be releasing a collapsible text box so you can hide content and let viewers click into what they're interested in? Or what about for your event page where you want to share photos of your offsite? Or your team or project page where you want to highlight a few concepts and designs? You can try our new image carousel, which is coming soon, where viewers can rotate through a series of images. The second focus area for us is we believe sites should be more collaborative. We recognize we can bring more of the collaboration power of Google Docs to our site building experience and enable even stronger collaboration than we do today. So when you have multiple people working on the same site, it's really important you know exactly what changes have been made before publishing the content. So coming hopefully by the end of this year is a feature we're calling internally Inform Publishing. Uh, this gives you a consolidated view of all of the changes that have been made to the draft site since the last publish, no matter how many people have edited the site. So it's easy to just open up this UI and see all of the changes that have been made. You'll know exactly when you're ready to publish. We also plan on supporting the full revision history you know and love from doc sheets or slides in the sites editor. So for example, when your teammate by mistake deletes the home page of your website, you can simply just revert back to the older version. This is one of our top priorities. I know it's a very common request. We also plan to support commenting on draft sites, just like what you're familiar with in Docs. 
so editors can review and discuss content in real time with coworkers and get feedback right in line in the editor directly. Our third focus area is we believe sites should be more current. Sites are really easy to create, and we don't want to change that, but they can be very hard to maintain. We have big plans for how to help keep sites fresh. So we're working on a new site badge that will appear on the bottom left of sites when enabled. To start, the badge will likely include the last updated date of the page, so viewers will always know how current the content is. But as we build on top of this, we also hope to show the last editor of the page, as well as a contact owner form. So when site viewers visit a site, they'll be able to understand when the page was last updated, they can provide feedback directly to the site owner, or they'll have the contact information to reach out to the editor of the page. You'll see more effort here in the future to ensure that sites stay current and up to date. We hope to proactively and intelligently help site creators keep content fresh, as well as give site viewers the information they need to make the freshness evaluation for themselves. Our fourth focus area is we believe sites should be optimized for enterprise. And this means a variety of things, so I'll talk through a few now. Cloud Search allows you, allows you to use the power of Google to search across your company's content. So if I'm looking for my artifacts from this session, um, I, can see, I can simply ask Cloud Search, um, and it'll find everything relevant. It'll find my speaker notes, it'll find this presentation, and it'll find so, so many emails about our revisions to this slide deck. <laughs> um, as part of the April G Suite Alpha Bundle, we launched our first Cloud Search integration. In fact, this, this screenshot here is coming from a site. Um, so site editors can now add a search box to the header, body, or footer of a new site, and viewers can search and see results from within the site. We think this will be really interesting for customers who are using new sites for internet landing pages or uh, for customers who would consider doing that. Uh, if you're interested in testing this out, please do reach out to us. Um, it, it launched as part of the G Suite Alpha Bundle this month. Now, for those of you in large or regulated industries, we know it's important for you to be able to find every artifact that exists in your organization. So with Google Vault, you can do advanced search and export across all of your users to meet litigation and compliance needs. Currently in Alpha, and likely launching to beta in May, is our Vault integration. So you'll be able to search and export site content across all of your new sites. I'm hoping this QR code works. Uh, if it doesn't, you can feel free to reach out to us, um, and we can get you to sign up. We're really excited about what's to come in new sites. Um, I don't want it to be lost that sites is already more powerful than you might think it is. Customers are using sites for all kinds of interesting websites, and it's so simple and it's so easy to use. So to help illustrate this, I'm going to hand it over to Brian, um, who's going to help build a site with you. And you can see the power and simplicity of sites firsthand. Thanks, Eric. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian, and I lead design for Google Sites. Um, so now we're going to build a site together. Uh, if you've never used sites before, hopefully you walk away from this feeling like you can do this too. Uh, and if you have used sites before, you'll notice some new features that you'll be able to use really soon. So for this scenario, let's imagine we work at a luxury hotel company, Sky Hotels. We're in the HR department, and we create awesome programs for Sky's employees. The problem is, information is scattered throughout the company in docs, in emails, and in people's heads. So our goal is to create an employee resources homepage, kind of like Google.com, where search is front and center. We also want to create a program details page and a team page so people can learn who's who at the company. To get started, we can simply type sites.new in the browser. This takes us to the editor. On the left is your canvas, and on the right, your tools. Anything you put here is considered draft and private to you until you hit that purple Publish button in the upper right. To start off, let's upload the Sky Hotels logo. 
Sites automatically extracts the primary colors from your logo, in this case pink, and suggests adding it to your theme. We'll take the suggestion. In the Themes tab, we have six beautiful free themes ready to use. And with one click, we can easily restyle our page uh, without messing with the content on the canvas. So in this scenario, we'll stick with the simple theme and the pink accent color, which feels on brand for Sky. Let's switch over to the Pages tab. Here, we can start creating a structure for the site. Using the plus button in the lower right, we can add the Programs page and Teams page. As we add the pages, we can see the navigation on the canvas is updated. Great. Now that we have the pages set, we can start adding some subpages. Uh, here, we're going to add subpages for Sky's different employee programs. You can find that option in the Overflow menu. So now let's switch back over to the home page and start adding some real content to the site. We replace the page title with something a bit more inviting, like how can we help you? And then we can also update the header image to be a little bit more exotic. So you can see that Sites automatically is adjusting the colors in the image to ensure that you can read the text on top of the image. Now, how do we get that search box that we're imagining? The answer is Cloud Search, one of Sites' newest features, which you'll be able to use in the Alpha Bundle. Employees can now quickly, easily, and securely find information across the business. That's pretty cool. And so now let's say we have some like legacy resources, like a guidebook or a deck. We can easily embed that uh, on the home page as well. And with code embeds, you can embed content from anywhere on the web, like this Twitter stream, for example. Moving on to the programs page. So you can click on the, the navigation links uh, in the canvas to jump between the pages. We've been listening to your feedback, and a common request was the ability to remove this header. So you're not stuck with a header if you don't want it. And we can do that here to create a blank canvas. One of my favorite things about Sites is the 12-column grid. We can add content about the Global Exchange program, and it snaps right into place. And the page looks really good with little effort. As we start adding the content about the Global Exchange program, we realize that we don't have all the information that we need. Eric created this program at Sky, so all the details are in his head. No worries. We can easily add him as a collaborator to the site. So together, Eric and I are creating this page in real time, just like you would in Google Docs. Usually, good websites have a call to action. To make this site actionable, we can add a button which links out to the program's application. You'll see the button's color is automatically pulled from the theme's color palette. And finally, to make the page easier to digest, we can add a table of contents. This will automatically generate shortcuts to the different headings on the page. And so this, this page is not very complex, but you can imagine this being very useful uh, for a text-heavy site, like a Help Center or FAQ page. Great. Let's move on to the Teams page. So normally, laying out a page like this would be a pretty daunting task, uploading each photo individually. To help us, we can take advantage of section layouts. With just a few clicks, we have placeholder content ready to go, which makes it easy to visualize and fill out the page. And once it's laid out, we can easily replace the gray squares with images uh, from content from Drive, custom code snippets, whatever you want. In this case, we drop in our team's photos, and it's done pretty quickly. Now, our team at Sky is very distributed, so we want to showcase all the office locations. We can now add a carousel of images, and this was actually another one of our top requested features. So that's it. We have a home page, programs page, and a team's page. Before we go live, we can easily check out how the site will look on different screen sizes using preview mode. In preview mode, we can click on the phone, tablet, and desktop icon. And this will show us that the site is scaling nicely, no matter where you look at it from.
So I think we're ready to go live. Once we click the Publish button, Sites allows us to create a unique URL. And this is also where we can manage the permissions for who can view the site. In this scenario, we can leave it, a, leave it to anyone in, in the Sky domain can view the site. So let's just quickly check out what we made uh, on the demo. You can switch over to the demo. So here's the site that we just made. Looks very inviting. How can we help you? And it leads with Cloud Search. And so I think since we did a great job here, we're ready for a vacation. We can type in Sky Vacation. And this will pull up any related documents uh, to the Sky Vacation policy. You can also check out some of the other pages that we made. And we can see that this, the site scales nicely across different screen sizes. So that's it. Let's switch back over to the slides. So now I'll invite Eric back up to give a quick recap of what we discussed today. Thanks. Great. So to recap what we talked about so far today, we started by talking about why we're so excited about new sites. Uh, and highlighted the benefits of it being natively part of G Suite, how it handles responsive design seamlessly, and how you don't need to know any code to make a beautiful, functional website. We talked a bit about migration from classic sites, how we currently offer a conversion tool that we're working on, and how we plan to launch a usage dash dashboard for admins to help manage the migration, and a unified home screen for creators so they can e easily manage both their classic sites and their new sites. We showed each of our focus areas for new sites over the next couple of years, um, and a few example features coming soon for each. Uh, we want sites to be more visually expressive, collaborative, current, and optimized for enterprise. And finally, Brian took you through a demo. We built a powerful and fully functional site in five, 10 minutes, um, and it couldn't have been simpler. So with that, I'll pause and say thank you for coming. Thanks for listening to us. Um, and if you give us a minute or two, we will get ready for Q&A. Thanks. <laughs>